Hi, my name's Dave Fountain, and since retiring I've taken an interest in all things associated with the Teachers Pension Scheme. Teachers Pension Schemes have changed quite a few times over recent years, and we have another one coming just over the horizon due to something called the McLeod Judgment, and it's a topic I get asked regularly about. My aim here is to keep the explanation as short as possible, and at the end give you a link to a spreadsheet that will allow you to work out roughly what the financial implications are for you. Hold on, I hear you say. If it's going to be short, why wait till the end? Well, here's the really short version. In 2015, teachers already on the final salary pension scheme started being moved onto the new career average scheme. This was done on a sliding scale based on each teacher's age. Because it was based on their age, this was illegal. It was age discrimination. That unlawful act has got to be put right. So to put it right, teachers who were in a final salary scheme before 2015 are going to be given a choice how their service from 2015 up to 2022 will be treated. Now, if that's all you need, that's, that's the very quick version. If that's all you need, just jump to the end or check the link at the bottom to see the link to the spreadsheet that I hope will help you understand how much this means in terms of pounds and pence for you. If you'd like just a little bit more detail, hang on and I'll try to explain it in, with a little bit more flesh on those bones. So firstly, we're going to do a quick summary of the recent history. Before 2007, teachers had a final salary scheme that allowed them to retire on a full pension at the age of 60. This is known as their normal pension age, and the normal pension age is the thing that's being changed. So at the moment, I abbreviate this to NPA, normal pension age, 60. To work out the pension for this scheme, the teacher's final salary is multiplied by the number of years they taught, divided by 80, and multiplied by their final salary. So if you taught 20 years, you'd get 28 years, which is a quarter, of your final salary as a pension. If you taught 40 years, then you get 40 80ths, or a half of your final salary as a pension. In addition, in this scheme, you also got a lump sum, a tax-free lump sum, equal to three times your annual pension. Now, in 2007, or by the time we got to 2007, the government decided that such pensions as these were too expensive and changed the scheme. They changed the retirement age to 65, bringing it in line with the state pension age, and they got rid of the lump sum element of the pension. In return, they increased the value that each year was worth. So instead of it being worth 180th, it became worth 160th. So if I give you in comparison, if you taught for 40 years in the old scheme, you got half your salary or 50%. If you taught for 40 years in the new scheme, you got two thirds or 66% of your final salary as your pension. So you can see we went from 50 to 66%, which gave you more. Of course, you had to wait five more years and that is quite a big difference. However, this was not age discrimination. And I'll come on to the explanation of that a little bit later. we are going through the history. So moving ahead to now to 2012, the government was still pushing about public sector pensions being too expensive um, and to reduce the costs of these. Now, despite several teacher strikes, they went ahead with the most recent change. In April 2012, any new teacher taking up post was put onto what was called the career average scheme, and it works slightly differently to the other two. In this scheme, your pension is built up each year by an amount equal to 1 57th of your salary for that year. So over your 40 years, you get a 57th of your first year, of your second year, of your, and so it actually works out to be an average of the 40 years you were working. There's no automatic lump sum again. Now, whilst all new teachers were put onto the career average scheme, the teacher strikes won a concession from the government that existing teachers would not be moved onto it immediately they wouldn't be moved until 2015 at the earliest. And to pre protect those who were closest to retirement, some of them would not be moved onto it until 2022. 
Now, this is where we get to the significant part about where age discrimination did or did not take place. The first change in 2007, where new teachers were not allowed to join the pension age of 60 scheme, but had to join the pension age of 65 scheme, did not involve age discrimination because it applied to any teacher who joined after 2007, no matter what their age was. Now, this seems a little counterintuitive because obviously new teachers tend to be younger, but it wasn't based on their age. It was based on when they joined. And that's the key difference that uh, where age discrimination does and does not come into effect. Similarly, in April 2012, any new teacher was put onto the career average scheme. And again, this was any teacher, no matter what they age they were at that time. So again, we have no age discrimination. Where age discrimination did come into play was the way in which teachers who were already on the final salary scheme in 2012, how they were moved gradually from the, career, from the final salary scheme onto the career average one. It was done at different times and it was based on their date of birth. And that is where the age discrimination comes in because it was based on their age, the time at which they were allowed to move or stay on the final salary to the career average. So let's have a look a little bit closer at this gap at this period from 2007 through to uh, 2015. <clears throat> so what I'm looking at here, and you'll notice that I've mixed the colors. This is because if you're on the pension age 60 scheme, you were allowed to stay on that scheme even up to uh, much later. If you're on the pension age 65 scheme, that's the one you stayed on um, throughout this point. So this bottom bar is starting to show how this happens. And we've, we've got this triangular section within this graph that shows that people changed from one to another gradually between 2015 and 2022. People who were born after 1965 had to move to the career average scheme on the 1st of April 2015. And people who were born before 1962, before April 1962, were allowed to stay on the final salary scheme until April 2022. So they're still on the final salary scheme. And the ages between these two dates of birth had different dates. And so they gradually were being moved across one after another. Until by the time we get to April 22, everybody is on the career average scheme. Now, as that transition process has proved to be unlawful, and this is what the McLeod case was about, the government has got to remedy the problem. However, it's only got to remedy it for those who are affected. So we've got to look at who is eligible, who was affected directly. The first thing is, you had to be in the scheme before 2012. After 2012, and you were not Age, you're not, you were not discriminated against because of your age because everybody who joined after 2012, no matter what their age, was put into the career average scheme. You also have to be in the scheme after March 2015 because after March 2015, you would be somebody who got moved according to your date of birth, according to your age, at a certain time into the career average scheme. And it doesn't matter whether you are still teaching, whether you are already retired or you're about to retire, if you meet those first two points, then you will be eligible to choose how your salary will be treated or how your pension or service will be treated. The remedy is that for anybody with service from April 2015 to March 22, can choose either to be put or stay in the career average scheme as is shown on their benefit statements at the moment, or be moved back and treated as though they were in the final salary pension scheme all along. At the moment, we do not know when teachers will be asked to make that choice. But it's almost certainly not going to happen until after April 2022. New laws need to be passed and the question then is which would be the best for you. To give you a rough idea, I've made an online spreadsheet that you can copy and use to see what difference 
the two schemes make. <clears throat> so this is the spreadsheet. It's only going to give you a rough idea, so don't take it as absolute gospel. The first thing to do is make a copy for yourself. Go to File and make a copy. That will allow you to make changes to the sheet uh, for your own numbers. And the white cells are the one we're going to change to match your specific details. Now you get these details from your benefit statements. If I just bring up my benefit statement. Uh, here's my last benefit statement. As I said, I gave up work, so my, my dates on this will be different to the one you maybe see if you're still working. The first white cell is our best final average pension, our uh, first final average salary. That is in this section under your final salary, either the 80th or the 60th scheme, depending which final pension scheme you're in. And your average salary is shown here. And simply take that number and put it in this first box. The date that you entered the career average scheme is also on your benefit statement. Uh, in a slightly different place. If you go down to the average salary breakdown, if you if you download this, the benefit statement from Teachers Pensions, I find this easier to find. And what you're looking for is the dates where your career average, if you look on the row here, that is my first career average row. You can see the line below it is 80th final salary. And it's the first date there. So that is the first date. For most teachers, it's going to be the 1st of April 2015. Um, and then finally put in the date that you finished or leave it as today's date if you're still working. If you want to be able to compare it directly to your benefit statement, use the same date there as you have on your benefit statement. And then you get to choose which of the two pension schemes you're in, which are the two final salary pension schemes you're in. It's either the MPA 60 or the MPA 65. And whether or not you're full or part time. Obviously, if you're doing 0.8 of a timetable, then you're 80%. If you're 0.6 of a timetable, you're 60%. And that then will give you these two figures. If you are going to compare this to your career average scheme, it's worth noting when you retire and the reductions you get if you're going to take it early. Quite often what we find, or what I have found when looking at various people's statements, is that if you go at 60, then this figure I've got here, my, my 2300, roughly, is roughly the same as what I would have on my statement as being my career average. But that career average depends on me retiring at 67 or 68. And therefore, if I go at 60, it would be reduced to around about the same figure. Um, sometimes a little bit more. But one of the key elements is it how much more. Because this extra lump sum, you do not get in the career average. So I've ended up with a better pension under the career average, an annual pension of £10 a year more, it would take me a long time to build up that missing lump sum. So I hope that's helped. By all means, ask me any questions. I'm always willing to help. Pensions, and the teacher's pension particularly, I'm quite excited and passionate about because when I realised I could have done better myself and I'd missed out to the tune of over £2,000 a year, I thought I can either moan about it or I can do something about it. This is me doing something about it. Well, good luck with your pensions and your planning for the future.